Hi, my name is Melissa Pacone, and today I am going to show you how to set up Photoshop. Some of you may be switching over from Photoshop Elements. Some digital scrapbookers are wondering how they can get this set up to look like the project bin. And this tutorial is actually good for anyone using Photoshop, anyone wanting to be able to get your images into Photoshop quickly and easily. My headset's not working today, so I apologize if the cat starts meowing or the kids start yelling or there's a lot of background noise. So the audio may be a little bad. I'm just gonna do this quick for you today. This is my basic default, what Photoshop looks like when it starts up. I'm on a small screen, so I'm gonna play with the panels a little bit. What you want is this mini bridge here. Mini Bridge is new in CS5. In order for it to work, you must have Big Bridge running in the background. Here's Big Bridge. I've got it on in the background. I'm just going to jump back into Photoshop. And I'm going to customize this layout. If you're on a PC, you already have an application frame. If you're on a Mac, you can probably see your desktop behind everything. To turn on the application frame, you want to go up to Window, Application Frame. And you really want to use this uh, and have this turned on for what I'm going to show you. It won't work without it. So I'm going to take Mini Bridge. Now, you'll notice, see these little dashed lines? These are little grabber handles. You can actually grab this stuff and pull it out of there. And I don't need my history panel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say Close Tab Group. I'm going to get rid of my history panel. I'm going to take this mini bridge, just so you can see, I'm going to turn this off. I'm sure you've read that already and gotten your fill. Don't need to save that. Here's my mini bridge. If I open it up, I can see that it's, it looks a lot like bridge. I am going to resize it. doesn't matter. I can double click in this little area here to open and close it. I'm going to grab it by the handle, come down to the bottom. When I drag it, you can see there's a little blue line that shows up at the bottom, which means it's going to dock, release my mouse, and it's docked. Now when I double click, I can see everything. Now this is crazy. I don't really need to see all of that. I like to see it kind of like that. So if you get it just right, you'll get the names down here, you get the images. You may have some pods in here. It's got a little X on it in the circle. Go ahead and click that. This is all you need. This is a live breadcrumb trail. So I know where I am. I'm in my external hard drive and yada, 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 right? So here's where I am. I am gonna leave everything else. I like to see my adjustments. I actually don't ever look at my color so I could snap that up. Definitely layers, adjustments, any other panels that you want open and around, you can go ahead and get those set up the way you want. Once you have this set up the way you want it to, come up to this little double arrow and choose New Workspace and go ahead and type in your name. I already have one called Melissa. So it's asking me if I want to overwrite it. Yeah, that's fine. So now if I, you know, sometimes I accidentally, you know, mess it up or, you know, maybe I make my layers disappear and I'm like, ah, where's all my stuff? Just come up here and say reset and you'll be reset every time. So. I have different workspaces. You can see I like to do digital painting. My digital painting workspace is completely different than my regular workspace, okay? When I get started, now there's lots of ways to get images into Photoshop all at once and quickly, and I'm gonna show you a couple ways. I like to start off in Bridge. I take a look at Bridge. I start with my papers. I come in here and I say, hmm, I like those papers. Those look pretty good. And then I can come up here to my Tools menu in Bridge, go to Fire, uh, Photoshop, and choose Load Files into Photoshop Layers. And then Photoshop does its thing. My computer's acting up a little bit today. I uh, had to clean off the hard drive. It was getting a little full. I had too many digital scrapbooking graphics loaded up. And now I have three layers here that I can work with. So that's great. I can go ahead and do whatever I want with my papers. Quick way to see everything full screen. Double click on the hand tool. Now I can see everything. I can see they're all here. Yay. Okay. Now I want to add some embellishments. So I'm going to come in here to mini bridge. I have my embellishments. This one looks good. I can just 
click and drag and drop. I had a whole bunch of them selected. So you can do this one at a time or you can come in here and if you hold down the control key or the command key on the Mac, you can select multiple images in here and then you can click and drag them all at once. And then you can hit return, you can double click in the box or you can click on this little check mark and it's automatically dropping them in. So it's giving you, what it's doing is actually placing them. So it's giving you that big square with the, the little X in the middle. See this little X? So these are control handles. You can resize, you can move it around. I can say, I keep grabbing the, grabbing the wrong thing there. Oh, it's so small, I don't know if I can get in there. Um, you can move it around on the page. You can resize it, you can rotate it whatever you want to do, and then place it. I'm just going to click OK to all of these and place them all in the middle. <coughs> and then you'll notice over here, now all of my layers have this funny little icon. They are now smart objects. What does that mean? Well, let's say I decided, I'm going to hide this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's decide that I want this smaller. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make it smaller. And there it is. And I'm gonna move it off to the side and I can start doing my design and start laying things out. And I'll be like, oh, you know what? I didn't really wanna make that smaller. I wanna make it larger again. Well, now when I increase the size, I'm not gonna lose quality as long as I don't make it larger than the original was because it's looking at this image on disk. It's actually referencing the file on my external hard drive where I pulled it from. So this can be very handy. It can also take up more space. It's gonna slow you down. You don't really need it. I'm going to click, hold down the shift key, click on the bottom one, right click and choose rasterize layers. This breaks the link to the original graphic on disk, okay? Now I have them all selected. Didn't really need to do that. And then I can come in here and I can continue moving things around. Mini bridge is only in CS5. It's not in earlier versions. You can only drag and drop into Photoshop in CS5. You cannot do this in earlier versions. Again, remember you need big bridge in the background in order for mini bridge to work. I can also drag from big bridge. So if I come in here and let's see, uh, this is also, yeah, I clicked on the wrong thing. This is also a live breadcrumb trail. Let's go back in here. I can also come in here and find things and drag and drop. I'm sorry, it's so small. Uh, let's see, I'll pick this flower. I like that flower, bring it in. And there I have this flower. And again, just right click, rasterize layer. I can also drag and drop from my desktop. It doesn't have to be from Bridge or from Mini Bridge. It's very, very handy. And that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.